Hello, this is Steve Pavel. Uh, I'm a Sage 100 Sage Intelligence Consultant with DSD Business Systems. And uh, welcome to another Sage Intelligence product demo. Uh, we have an entire library of some Sage Intelligence demos, and I encourage you to watch as many of those uh, as you can. Uh, the goal of these demo recordings is to show what's possible uh, using the Sage Intelligence tool. And uh, <clears throat> hopefully I've given uh, demos that have a real life, you know, practical uh, perspective. So this demo, I'm going to be covering uh, ratios, some GL ratios, some graphs, and uh, I guess we'll touch on dashboards. And um, I'm using the same data set that we used in the uh, Sage Intelligence product demo called Custom Financial Statements. So if you haven't seen that one, uh, I would I recommend that you watch that. It's the same data set. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So um, the genesis of uh, this example that I'm going to run through, or the yeah the report that I created here, um, it came from <clears throat> the Business Insights. So I'm just going to quickly show you. I'm in a a T03 test demo company, and I'm going to go ahead and show you an example of uh, the dashboard that's built into Sage 100. Uh, my day, demo date, I believe, is July 31st, 2022. So I'll go ahead and uh, launch display the dashboard and then go ahead and put in my uh, period end date of 731.22. And that's, I'll make a note of that. That's what we'll use as we go through uh, the actual Sage Intelligence report. So I showed you, or I put in this uh, da particular dashboard, um, just the GL ratio and uh, ratios and graphs here. And uh, so, like I said, this is where kind of the idea came from. Uh, you'll notice here that it's like, well, <clears throat> this is for the T03 company. And I can see the quick ratio and the current ratio in a graph as well as the numbers, which is nice. And the same thing with the uh, uh, leverage ratio, the debt equity. Uh, this is relative. It doesn't show me dollars here, and this doesn't show me dollars either, but you know, it gives you those ratios and the graphs, and the same thing with the profitability ratios. What I can't do here is I can't say, well, how does that compare to, I don't know, the past year? How does it compare to the same period last year? Or is it a trend that you know it's improving or decreasing? And uh, this is the T03 company, but what if I wanted to see a consolidated view? And on the profitability, this is company wide T03. Again, I, maybe I want to see a consolidated view, or maybe you want to see uh, particular profit centers, or particular in this in this example would be locations. So while these are really neat and useful, uh, they're kind of limited. So that was the well, that was the idea behind like uh, let's build something a little bit more robust. So I, I constructed this. For, sorry, that's I uh, got to the wrong screen there. Okay, so what is this? Sorry about that. Detour. We're gonna stay inside Excel here so we won't have that happen again. All right, so um yeah, so this particular report uh uh as I mentioned is the same data set I used on the custom financials demo. And I'm going to use the 731-2022 date. And this particular group of companies is uh, three companies, and each company having multiple locations. And uh, there is an ability to do a consolidation. So the first tab is, uh, I call it the parameters tab here. OK, and what I put on the parameters tab is just what you have control to kind of interact with this report. So I'm going to start with uh, the reporting date of 731.22. I'm not using budgets. I could use budgets in this report. I did not in this particular demo. So that's kind of irrelevant. But you'll see here that I also have a choice on for the income statement, which would be the profitability ratios and graphs. I can choose uh, consolidated all three companies. I could choose a given company. I can choose uh, 
any any location with any of the companies. All right, and then on the balance sheet uh, ratios, uh, again, I can choose consolidated uh, or any of the companies. This particular demo company doesn't have balance sheet accounts for their individual locations. So uh, that's why the locations are, were not put in the drop down list here. So you may notice that it's like, yep, I got this uh, column B, and then I got a column C, which is kind of the same. So I'm going to come back to the column C up there, show you. So first step, uh, 731, yep, consolidated. All right, so we're going to go over to the first tab, or the next tab over, and there's our quick ratio. I'll go ahead and uh, make this a little larger. Actually, close that. All right, okay, so we have a chart here. And you'll notice that I've got the, the upper chart. The top chart is uh, the DSD consolidated. It's a quick ratio. And then there's that date. That should look familiar because that's what I put here. OK, and I've got a trend there that's going back uh, 13 or back. Yeah, the month that you selected and then back 12 months from that's for a total of 13 months. So you kind of uh, get an opportunity to see a trend here. The other thing that you may notice is that um, there's a couple, of, obviously, with uh, Excel, there's a number of different ways you can do graphs. Um, but in this case, uh, I thought it kind of made sense uh, for, for all of these to uh, to use what's uh, what I refer to as a, uh, well, actually, Excel refers to it as a combination chart, where it's a combination of a bar, bar chart and a line chart. And you can see that uh, down here on the what they call the X axis, which is uh, down here. Uh, I have the various dates, and that's where I chose to do, you know, 13 months. And then you got the dual Y axis. So the uh, the Y axis that's on the left, okay, that is your actual dollar amounts. And then the Y axis that's on the right is the uh, the quick ratio. That's the yeah measurements for the quick ratio. You know, by the way, uh, I left the, we could just look at the graph, but I left the pivot table uh, in there as well, so you can actually see the numbers. Okay, so I'm going to go back, and then you notice that it's like, well, I see the same thing down here. Uh, yes, you do, and that's what I was going to show you next, is what if I said, um, well, that's pretty neat. I can see the trend for the past 12 months, but how does that compare to, uh, I don't know, how's come June? You know, June of 2022, how does that compare to June of 2021? So I gave the ability here to say, this is a column C is your comparison chart. All right, so we're going to move this to uh, a year prior than what I have here. We'll go back to our quick ratio uh, here. I've actually got to refresh the pivot table. OK. And then you see here down in the second graph, now I've got the, again, it's the DSD consolidated. It's a quick ratio, but now, you know, it has the, uh, it indicates that it's for uh, the 13 months uh, into 731-2021. So you see that there, and that makes it uh, easier to actually compare. And again, I have the comparison with the, with, with the numbers in addition to the chart there. All right, so um, the other tabs, I'll briefly show you those. Uh, they're pretty much the same, that um, they all operate off like what I put in the parameters here in column B and column C. Once I refresh the pivot tables, it did it across all. So I got the current ratios here, leverage ratios, um, and uh, profitability ratios. All right, so I constructed that comparison to be used a couple of, you know, whatever way you want. It could be that it's like maybe you, maybe you just want to compare after, maybe you do um, budgets for your balance sheet accounts and you want to compare the uh, actual to the budget. So column C could actually be, you know, comparing to the budget uh, for the same entity, uh, reporting entity is what you have in column B. Or as I just showed you, it could be a comparison of uh, the prior year. OK, it also could be a comparison in this case of company by company. So if I said. Uh, actually, let me do this to say uh, I'm going to see the consolidated one at the top. But maybe in the second grid, I want to see how it looks for the T01 company. 
All right, so I'm going to pick the 201 for being from statement and the balance sheet. All right, we'll flip back to our current ratio here. We'll go ahead and refresh and pivot tables. All right, so now you see it's like, yep, I still have the consolidated for 731. It's uh, apples, not apples and apples. Let me change this to 2022. I will go back and refresh. All right, so now I see the consolidated, and then I see this, just the T01 demo company uh, down in the second grade. So that way you kind of see is that company uh, got better ratios than, you know, the consolidation of all three companies. Okay, and maybe I want to compare the T01 company with the T02 company if they're in the same business and, and so forth and run similarly. I can do a comparison like that. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say I want to compare. <coughs> Uh, T02, and I'll do the balance sheet and income statement ratios. All right, we'll go back to our uh, quick ratio here. We'll go ahead and refresh our pivot table. All right, so now I got a comparison of saying, well, here's T02 company, quick ratios for that uh, 13 months end of that date, and then here's the T01 with the same quick ratio for the same date. And again, that carries forward. Uh, to all of these tabs. Now you control it there on the parameters tab. Okay, so since we're not, um, yeah, since we're not, uh, uh, we don't have balance sheet accounts by location, we got to leave the location, but we still do, do have income statements by the location. So I'm just going to pick one, just going to pick one here for the, uh, yeah, let me pick the, uh, yeah, it was FAY. Okay, so let me do that for both then. All right, and I got the same date in both places. That that would be the same numbers in both places. So let's change that to 2021. All right, so like I said, the balance sheet accounts wouldn't, uh, balance sheet ratios don't make sense for the location since they don't have balance sheet accounts. So we're going to go to the profitability ratio. And uh, let me refresh the data here. Refresh the pivot table. Okay, so now I got uh, just that particular location, and I'm looking at the 12 months or, or 13 months ended 2022. So the 13 months ended in July 2021. You know, month by month there. All right, and if I say, well, I wonder how this particular location is doing compared to a different location. We got that capability too. So if I say I want to compare the FY, FAY to the uh, RAL. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll go to the profitability ratio, update our, refresh our pivot tables. Okay, and now I'm comparing uh, this location profitability ratios for 2022 to actually want to compare that to the same date. So let me do that. All right, go back here, refresh. All right, so um, yeah, in this particular, on the profitability ratios, you, you can do what you want. In this case, I said for my demo, I'm just going to do revenues, direct costs, and gross margin. Um, but maybe you want to do operating income, uh, and you could do both. You could do, add a separate tab for profitability based on operating income or uh, EBITDA or, you know, or, or net income. You know, you could do any of those or income before taxes. So you can define the profitability ratio, whatever way you want. All right, so hopefully this gives you, uh, is another example of the power of uh, Sage Intelligence. And in this particular case, I'm demonstrating how you can do, uh, you know, ratio analysis uh, with trends and using graphs. And uh, and uh, this is maybe a step towards dashboards as well, whether you want to call these dashboards or we could actually combine some of these graphs onto one page and call it a CFO, you know, dashboard. We can do that as well. All right, so I appreciate uh, <clears throat> you're watching this video. Like I said, um, go ahead and uh, 
encourage you to watch our other Sage Intelligence videos and uh, appreciate your time and have a great day.